Welcome back to the Dan Cave, and today for the Mirrorverse 101, we're looking at dungeons. Now, I've seen a lot of questions over in the Discord about dungeons, so I wanted to just put a quick video together on what they are, how to do them, and maybe a few tips and tricks along the way. But as always, before we jump into this, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We're going to have plenty of videos coming out as we get closer to the launch of Mirrorverse on June 23rd. So make sure to hit that bell so you can be notified when those new videos drop. Friday, we have the new tier list coming out, so make sure to come back, check that video out, and give me your feedback on who you think should be where on that tier list. So let's make our way into the Mirrorverse. All right, so we are in the game now. Let's check this out. We're gonna go over to Dungeons, and the first thing I want to point out is that Dungeon Energy that you can see right above me over here. It's gonna come up in the red, and the dungeon just started today, so we have 80 energy to use in the dungeons. Now, when it comes to dungeons, you're gonna get 80 energy right up front. You're also gonna get additional energy throughout the week as this dungeon is going along. So you wanna make sure that you're using it before the end of the dungeon. So with this dungeon, with the 80 energy, every day you're gonna get an additional 40 energy. And by the time we get to the end of this dungeon, we're gonna have 200 energy. And so take it from me, you wanna use it throughout the event, not wait till the last minute because dungeons can take a little bit of time as you have a lot of energy because not only are you gonna get it on your daily basis, you're also gonna get it within the dungeon when you're exploring. And like we said before, if you don't use it, you lose it. So make sure to use that energy. Now, dungeons are an alliance thing. So this is one of the main reasons you want to make sure you're doing your dungeons. You're going to be delving together. You're going to be exploring together with your alliance. And as you do that, you're going to be getting rewards for the entire alliance. Not only are you going to get alliance rewards, you're also going to get milestones for yourself. So you can see on this one, we're over in the ranged dungeon. So we've got the ranged moats that are coming through. And these are going to kind of circulate as you go through the different dungeons to get the different moats. But you want to make sure you're doing them because it's really just free items, free gear as you're going through. All right, so in order to get these milestones, you got to get your points. And uh, one of the easiest things you can do is you can use one of these bonus guardians. Now we have two different types of dungeons. Essentially, you have one that's your standard dungeon, which this is that standard dungeon, you're always going to have these four guardians as your bonuses. Now you don't need all four, all you need is one of these guys on your team, and you're going to get that bonus, which we'll see in a minute when we form our team. So you want to make sure you pick out one of these guys and put a little bit of investment in them that two x points, it's going to make a big difference when you're trying to get those high milestones and all those rewards that are associated with it. So let's go over to the how to play. We'll look at what it is. We'll keep it at a high level and then we'll get into the matches in a minute and you'll see what we're talking about when we're exploring this dungeon. So dungeons are a very unique mode because we're going to be actually navigating these dungeons, going around on the different nodes to find different items. You're going to be using that energy in order to take different steps. Like I said, once we get over there, it'll make a little more sense. But really, you're trying to collect all these artifacts that are throughout the dungeon. Now, the different color artifacts are going to make a big difference. The blue ones are going to be the least amount of points. The red ones are going to be the most amount of points. And there's only a few on each of the floors. And depending on your difficulty, you may not even see reds until you get into the higher difficulties. Lastly, the thing you're going to be picking up is the bags. Now, the bags are pros and cons. Sometimes you open them up and they're going to give you buffs. These are great. You're going to need the buffs in order to take down the bosses and the battles and things like that. So you do want to pick them up a lot. But be aware, sometimes when you pick these things up, it's going to trigger the danger meter. You're going to now fight some monsters things like that or it could just teleport you across the map so most of the time these things are good but occasionally you'll get one of those bad things within the bag and you just have to face the consequences as we scroll over real quick you'll see just at a high level, we got the boss that's going to be on that final level of the dungeon and then your multiplier. So the more dungeons you do, the more multiplier you're going to get along with your guardian multiplier that we'll see once we set up our team. Lastly, there are items. So there are dungeon items in here. We just got patch notes yesterday that told us that we should be seeing some of these dungeon items over in the bazaar. So you may not need to use your orbs anymore, but we're not sure which items are going to show up in the bazaar. Those could just be potions. Those could be the revive potions, or we may get lucky. We may see the rods. We may see the map, different things like that. Now for this video, I'm going to purchase a couple of these so I can actually show you the items as we use them in the dungeon, just so you can understand what they're all about. But the thing to remember about this, every time I start a new dungeon, the dungeon store resets. And well, in order to get to the higher tiers, you got to buy the lower tiers. So every single time you're going to have to buy up to the higher tiers in order to get those better items. So because we have a couple orbs sitting around, we're going to go ahead and buy up a couple of these so that again, you can see these items once we get into the dungeon. Are there any left? 
Shut up and take my money. All right. So we purchased all the items, as you can see. Now we have tier six that is still available. So that's where I'm saying the guys that are at the very top of these leaderboards, this is what they're doing. They're purchasing this multiple times, getting plenty of maps, plenty of energy, uh, the scrolls, all that kind of stuff. And this is how they do the dungeons really quickly and get as many points as they can. So just keep that in mind. If you're free to play, if you're just chilling in the game, don't worry about it. It's one of those things that there's a few of the dungeons that matters in, but most of the dungeons, the leaderboard really doesn't matter. And we'll go look at that and I'll explain what I'm talking about when we're looking at the leaderboards and I'll click that right here. So this dungeon just opened up uh, within 30 minutes and you can see that we've got some big scores already on the leaderboards. And this is what I'm talking about. So as we go through, there's lots of names here. You're seeing a lot of the updated points in the thousands already. And this gets very, very high once it gets very, very competitive. And if we go over to the events rewards, you can see we've got the milestones here, which is great. You can watch yourself kind of go through there, but we've got the rank rewards. So you can see rank one is already up here and uh, you can see you're just getting more moats. Not as important here, but there are some dungeons where you're going to be able to get crystals and other items for being in the top uh, five, the top 10. And that may be where if you're wanting to ever compete in one of these, those are the ones to compete in. All right. So next up, we're going to jump in here. We're going to go into the run. So we're going to do a quick run. I'll probably speed it up a little bit as we go through. That way you're not having to watch the entire dungeon, but I'll break it down. I'll talk about the items, the different areas, uh, battles and things like that as we're in the dungeon. So I'm going to click the new run and we're at the team selection. So one of the things to think about with the team selection is that 2x point. So if I get rid of Ana real quick, and we throw in let's say scar you can see right there below scar we've got that 2x multiplier and that's what's really going to help us in the dungeon and get those points a lot quicker one other thing and i'm going to move myself over to this other side Ugh. all right so we're over here now and if i scroll all the way down here you're going to see that we have our different guardians in here now this particular one doesn't seem to have any guardians that are not allowed to be used but in some dungeons, you're going to come in here and they're going to have restrictions around who you can and can't use. So this is what's really important with Mirrorverse, making sure you're very focused on your main team, but not just the main three. You really need about six characters that you're investing in. That way, when you hit these different events and it says you can't use your Ariel, you can't use your Mr. Incredible, you can switch up your team and your team is still going to function. So again, going back to that six character team, make sure they're pretty interchangeable. All the characters work a very specific way and you want to find those synergies to where you can mix and match a really core group and make sure you still have a strong team no matter what you run into. All right, so now we're in the next screen. You can see that we have our difficulty selection that we can do. It's telling us that hard level three is really our sweet spot. Now that's also because I have Jack and Maui. They're bringing up my score, but I can use this and I can go up to hard or expert or even master. And you can see right down there, the recommended power for that particular dungeon, the max points per dungeon and the size size of the floor. So how big are these uh, dungeons and maps that you're going through? How long is it going to take you to go through a particular floor? And that's going to be some of the keys to really figuring out where that sweet spot is. Now, if you look at something like expert level five down to expert level one, the rewards, they're the same. The possible rewards in the bags. Really, the biggest difference here is going to be that max points in the dungeon. And so you have to really determine what makes the most sense. Now, if you're going from five to one, there's a decent difference within the points. You can see 6,600 or 5,800. But if you're looking between like one and two or two and three, the jump is not really that much compared to the difficulty jump that you're going to have when you're actually going through the dungeon. So kind of keep that in mind when you find your sweet spot. It may be better to go down a level or two just to do a faster dungeon than to have to struggle with a team, especially if you're using one of these 2X characters that maybe isn't actually leveled up as well, doesn't have enough skills and things like that. And you may struggle a little bit through it. Just pick what works for you. And so you can see here, we've got a couple different areas on the screen as we're in the dungeon. One, we have our icon. That is the node, that is the space we're on. And you can see that we can move up or down. So every time we start to move, it's gonna give us the choices of where we want to go. On the very right side over there, you've got that little demon looking icon with the bar, and that's going to be the bar that shows us how much enemy presence is around us. 
So the more we move, the more that goes up. And once that gets filled up, you're going to run into a battle. Now, there are some bags out there that can bring down this meter, but it's not often that you're going to run into them and because they're really random. You can't rely on that right below that meter. If I click the button, those are my items. So if I click that, you can see we've got quite a bit of items in here, whether it's potions, the revive or some of the ones that we purchased just a minute ago. So we'll get to those in just a minute, but I want to make sure that we run through a little bit of the dungeon before so I can really show you the mechanics as they work and then we'll start to use our items. So I'm going to go up and what's going to happen because there's not a choice to make. My character is going to continue to go until we hit a spot where we need to make a choice. It's also going to bring this fog of war away. We're going to see more of the map as we go. So as we're going, you can see that meter over there starting to jump up a little bit. We need to be very aware of that because of the level of dungeon that we're in. So let's go to the next one. You can see I quickly stopped because I have a decision I need to make. We're going to go up. You can see that meter was well, jumped a good bit. So because of that, we're going to go ahead and look at our scrolls to make sure that we're not going to trip that uh, meter over there. So I'm going to open up my items. I'm going to look at my scrolls. We have a T2, a level two invisibility scroll that we're going to use. And now it's going to change our meter to blue and it's going to give us eight steps that we can make before that meter gets triggered again. There has to be some kind of artifact here. So I'm going to use one more scroll because we do have quite a few. So let's use one more scroll. Add more to that count over there up to eight. Now, one important thing to notice, it doesn't add on. So we had one left over. We got eight more. It's not going up to nine. It's still going to max out at eight. Leave that and head on into the next dungeon. Now, before I go, I'm going to go back real quick. You can see at the very bottom there, we've got that dark green color, and that is how many points we've earned in this dungeon so far. It has not been stashed yet until you make it to the next floor. So you do have to at least complete the floor in order to get those points. Let's confirm. And now we've got two artifacts, multiplier and points. So you can see that 2x multiplier is taking us up multiple levels, not just the one. So now we went from level one here all the way halfway through three. Let's go on to the next floor. All right, so we still got to carry over our um, scroll there. So we have three more steps we can take. But I'm going to go ahead and use one of the other items to kind of show it off. We're going to use the magical map. So this is going to clear all the fog. We're going to be able to see the entire map and really look through our steps so that we can do our best to get as many points as we can with as few steps as we can make. All right, so you're seeing right away, we've got a red artifact down there. We want to make sure that we go after that one. We got a lot of bags, another artifact going towards the end and one straight up there and another one up there. So we've got a few. We've got quite a bit of ground to cover. And so one other thing we can use as far as items, is we can use the rods. Open this up. Let's use a rod. And what a rod's going to do is it's going to take you right to one of those artifacts. But keep in mind, if you use this and there's no more artifacts on the floor, well, you just waste it. Let's use this rod. See which way it takes us. And it's this one over here. That was one, two, and three. Get our artifact. You can see that was a pretty big artifact right there as far as points. I'm gonna go back in here, use one more scroll. And the important thing here to note, as we go back over the orange path, we're not gonna use any of our red dungeon energy. So when you're maneuvering through these, especially on the lower levels, and you really don't care about running into battles, you can just repeat the orange path and not use any of your dungeon energy and get to save that. It does tick up on your uh, meter on the right. So keep that in mind. You will stay at battles while you're traveling down the path you've already gone down. But at least here, it's going to help us get there a lot quicker. And on to that next floor. We are on dungeon floor four of five. We've used most of our items. So I'm actually gonna back out from this point. So I can just hit this door button right here. 
say I want to go ahead and quit and it's going to lock in that 4,000 points that we've earned and it's going to help us out. All right, so let's go back in and this time we're just going to kind of bump this down a little bit to just do a quick run. We're going to enter that dungeon. And in this case, we're going to open up those bags, open them up, get our buffs, get our different things. So you can see right there, we've got some dungeon energy. So that is another thing when you're opening these bags, it may actually make your dungeons take a little bit longer because you're just getting more energy along the way. We've got the teleport chest. Again, this is one of those things where it can be pretty annoying sometimes where it just teleports you uh, off and away to wherever it wants to on the map. And maybe you were right next to something like an artifact. So I would always recommend if you can see an artifact, it's right next to a bag, get the artifact first, and then open the bag just in case. Let's open up these bags because these could give us some buffs. One. Yet another teleport. Let's see where it takes us. You can see in some of these bags, we're gonna get moats, another, another teleport. So let's see where it takes us. All right, another so one. another teleport. You can tell there's a lot of teleports that happen uh, and it can really ruin your game plan if you are mapping out your steps and things like that. So just keep that in mind. And another teleport. Another one. All the teleports. All the teleports. And another one. I'm telling you. This is what happens to me all the time, which is why, again, I always like to get the artifacts before I open bags, just in case. So there is the boss that we are going to be going up against. We found the boss. So on floor five, you're going to have the boss. We're going to go into that. And I know we haven't really looked at this yet because we haven't needed to, but you can see that Scar's health is down a little bit. So this is where those potions come into play. And if I open up the potions, I have two different potions I can use. The dungeon revives. So if you were to lose a character, that's what you need in order to revive them. And the other one being your regular potions that can either be tier one, two, or three. Each are going to do a little bit more heal. So I'm just going to use level one. I'm going to confirm that use that on scar and you can see he got his health back fully healed up ready to go into this battle all right so the difference here is this battle is just going to be your one battle your one node and uh in this one it's judy hops for the ranged characters again depending on your dungeon that's going to be the boss of your dungeon You can also see that this one's doing a lot more damage. Scar's taking a lot more damage than he was before. So this is one of those where maybe Otto isn't the best, but honestly, we're going to beat it either way. I don't have too many worries when it comes to this. Especially with Jack's heals, Maui shields, all that good stuff. Throw out those heals one more time. out those shields one more time and genie is down so that is the dungeons we're gonna be rewarded with more points finishing up this run all right dungeon run complete we're gonna see the total so we earned 2254 points for that entire run our next run bonus is going to get 1.9. So that is the reason why you want to run multiple dungeons, why it makes sense to really make sure you're um, leveraging your energy the best way, the most efficient way. That way you can get multiple runs in. You can get multiple uh, multipliers as you're going through. So we did miss an artifact, uh, but hey, it happens. So we're going to go back to done. You can see when it comes to the dungeons, we got pretty far, already to level 10 in the milestones. We still have 110 energy left. We're gonna get more energy every day. So the important thing is to keep logging in, keep using it, because if you wait till the last day, it may take a good while to actually finish up uh, your dungeon. All right, so let's get big. And let's just wrap this video up. So that is the Mirrorverse 101 as we're talking about dungeons. Kind of give you the overview of what dungeons are, how they work, maybe some tips and tricks as you're doing it, the items that you can use there. And make sure you leave a comment below 
What is your favorite dungeon or what is the tip or trick that you use that maybe I didn't mention in here? And like I said before, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we do have a giveaway going on. Once we hit a thousand subs, we're going to be giving away a couple of those Mirrorverse Jack Sparrow characters and maybe you'll win one. But until next time, you guys take it easy.